This constitutes the initial inspection of the uh, Heathkit Model 012. It has arrived. Everything seems to be in good shipping condition. I don't see any structural problems. It came with a um, capacitor tied off from the vertical input. Doesn't matter, not important. All the knobs are there. I don't see the signature um, cracking that you find associated with heat storage on these particular knobs of this vintage. Felt looks good too as well. I don't see water damage or excessive humidity damage. There is no uh, rubbing away in any of the areas on the paint of the silk screening. The trap door was found uh, as attached on the unit. I removed it as part of this inspection. Uh, all three of the original screws were there. Uh, the case has no major uh, damage. There is a an indent here uh, that can easily be pushed out. This is not a, a tough one. Uh, could use a cleaning. This is going to be a case off, probably scrubbing with soap and what have you. Uh, back of the unit. Back of the unit uh, shows also what I saw in the picture, which is probably why it was DOA, was the missing fuse uh, receptacle cover. Uh, saw that in the picture. Um, looking in here, everything seems. Uh, appears to be copacetic. It doesn't look like this thing saw any real degree of abuse. Looking on this side, also good condition. So the initial inspection shows everything okay. We'll get everything opened up and take a closer examination. The inside of the case shows a significant accumulation of dust on the bottom. There is no flashing, no burning areas where there might have been some shorts. There's nothing in the case that indicates that there was any... Uh, Electrical problems, water problems, heat problems, any uh, over dryness damage to the unit. The inside appears to show an original complement of tubes and capacitors. The electrolytics appear to be Astron out of uh, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, the non-electrolytics, these uh, plastic polyester capacitors, uh, are IMP. Uh, the tubes are mullered or uh, a great deal of them appear to be mullered. Uh, some of the other ones appear to be, um, these are mullered, mullered, mullered. Uh, Sylvania. Um, looks rather clean in here. Uh, like I said, everything's original. Even this uh, multi-capacitor can right here. I see nothing troubling on the uh, cathode ray tube. It looks like the rubber is breaking down um, on this holder right here. And it's to be expected as well. Very clean on this side. The original soldering work seemed decent, not overly amazing. Slightly cold iron. Uh, definitely did not clean up after the work. Probably was really excited to get this thing going. I see a lot of areas with uh, divots and missing solder. Uh, a lot of places that could have been filled in. It's no matter. This can be gone over, gone through, and corrected. Definitely not a deal breaker. This is the rear of the unit. This is the Z-axis right here. This is accessible uh, via the trap door in the back. The uh, power cord. It looks a bit worse for wear. I don't see any cracking in it when I bend it. It's a matter of discoloration only. No problems there. Power supply appears to be in good condition. I see a couple of capacitors under here. The circuit board appears nice. A couple of spider webs in the way. You can see the pots could probably use a cleaning. See some of the ladder line poking out from under here. All in all, everything appears to be fine though. We just let this soak in the bathtub in the guest bathroom and scrub this out, see how clean we could get it. After scrubbing, the dirt came off in several layers. We'll see how it comes out when we rinse it now. Case cleaned up really nicely. Uh, while it was wet and had a good reflection, I was able to pull that large dent out of the top of the case. There's a smaller dent that sits on the other corner just over to the other side. I have some special tools that I'll be able to pull that one out as well. Um, the small minor remaining imperfections of the case only add to the character. I'll leave them alone. Um, there are no other issues to be dealt with on this case. I'll put the trap door back on. Um, 
now that we're done looking at this, the inside was cleaned out. There's nothing else to do there. Uh, the case is now uh, finished issue. So very good. And it does have the original uh, Heath kit uh, emblazoned with the logo on the handle. So it came out real nice. Very happy with the case, how it turned out. Before I get tempted to even fire these things up on the Variac, I like to look at the electrolytic capacitors furthest from the power supply. And if those capacitors, such as this one, don't even register a value, and for that matter on this one doesn't even register an ESR, and the one uh, back there beyond our field of view uh, shows a capacitance of just over twice the rated capacitance for that capacitor, it tells me that uh, whatever the environmental uh, uh, issues or the environment was in which this was stored, all these capacitors are pretty much uh, destroyed. I could go under and look at the capacitors under there too. Um, this is a unit not to be turned on. Uh, this unit will remain off until the capacitors are all cataloged, uh, removed, tested, replaced. The electrolytics anyway, uh, the rest of them will be tested in the interim. But um, in, in testing three or four of these electro tri-electrolytic capacitors, is enough to convince me that this is not a candidate for uh, simply uh, sticking onto a Variac and turning on and praying. So it's going to have to remain off for now. I finished testing all the electrolytic capacitors. On the uh, Starting with the top side, I had found that one capacitor, as I had mentioned, was completely open. Uh, the other ones, uh, one was reading substantially off, as I had mentioned, which I guess wasn't substantial in its day, but we could do better. Uh, this one read a little bit high. On the bottom, I had mentioned this, um, or had not mentioned, a 20 microfarad capacitor, which I had now found to be a replacement as part of a, uh, a multi-hand capacitor uh, that had gone bad. This is part of a repair. Um, one of the uh, 20s was bad on this. You can even see it was labeled uh, 20NG on, on right here. Uh, getting to that. Uh, there's a smaller CAN capacitor. Uh, it is located right here on the circuit board. Uh, this one has all 20s in it. Uh, the two of them read reasonably okay. Um, read a close ESR to each other, but one of them read 9.3 microfarads and its ESR shot up uh, to 30.3. So that was flagged. And that one uh, sits here. Uh, also, as part of the, um, uh, looks like a um, voltage rail there for, you can see it breaks off. That's probably for plate voltages. So, important capacitor. And we get down to the second can, and we can already see that this can has previously failed and been repaired. Somebody had put a 20 across there uh, some time ago. It's quite an old capacitor, so it's probably been there a while. I measured that 20. And I got 29, uh, ESR was unimportant, nothing that caught my attention. <clears throat> uh, the 20 red, 68.6 with an ESR 5.67. Uh, not counting that 20, I did find that the other 20 has an ESR of 78 with a mechanical defect inside. So if you pull the pin, push the pin in any direction, you lose the entire segment of that capacitor. So that 20 is shot as well, because if you shake the oscilloscope, you, lo you lose that whole uh, capacitor, right? So those 20s are gone. The 40 reads 33 and the 50 reads 83. The 50 has the lowest ESR of all of them, right? So uh, both cans are no good. Um, electrolytics are toast. Again, validates that uh, this oscilloscope won't be turned on with these electrolytics. Now that I have the um, schematic I'll be able to go through and take a look and see what's what we'll correct this for for uh, um, keeping everything looking nice we're gonna leave the original cans in uh, obviously we're gonna we're gonna have to find out what kind of work we're gonna do here this is gonna be interesting I'm sure I'll find a nice solution something cope aesthetic where we could have the can in place if not we'll do something nice up top as well right but we can't we can't leave it like it is